All right, so I have two demos. They're in this PDF. There's three, actually, but there are two new things that have to do with surfacing. Surfacing is a new thing to everybody. Up until this point, we've been working with sketches and solid bodies. So again, a sketch is like something on a piece of paper. A solid body is like a piece of clay. A surface is like the paper itself. So if you think about a cube as a piece of clay, if you delete one face of the cube, you are left with five resulting surfaces. And I can show you that in CAD in a minute. Given the time in class, it's fine for this to just be a watch and learn. I do advise, though, with what I have set up, that you at least attempt two of them for homework with the surfacing, just for the sake of learning surfacing, because you might find it useful for your own work. And again, in my opinion, it's this should probably only take like 10 minutes, if that, um, because it's only like three commands. I have it set up for you. So if you want to do it, if you, I won't collect it. It's fine. Again, it's optional. But if you want to attempt it for homework, it's under Des 400, Project 3, Recap with today's date. These are the three starting files. Again, you can ignore fan approach. It's just, this is what we covered before. I'll talk about it as a demo anyway. Again, to emphasize that thinking about how to build the model is half the battle. And sometimes you have to explore, test. This is what I said earlier. But this surface loft and the fan blade, it gets into surfacing. Again, it's only a couple commands where you can just kind of explore how to use surfacing. OK, so we're going to start with the surface loft. This is based off of a detail that Hannah provided, which is this grip here. Believe it or not, this is actually not that hard to do. It takes a little bit to get it to be repetitive and get several. Uh, you almost have to do it manually to get it to be done right, but I'll show you how to do one of these. So this is the starting file if you download it. I tried to approach it in a way that, you know, that I would recommend for a larger file with masters. We have this boss extrude from the base. This sketch four is the resulting trim of these fate of these lines from the master front view. So what the demo has you start by doing is by taking sketch four, going into surfaces here, and using the curve feature. If for some reason you don't have surfaces, I think you can right click on this and make sure you have it checked. Um, curves, if you for some reason you don't have it, you can always search for split line, but that's the command you want. So again, so we're going to highlight sketch four. Under curves, you want split line. I mentioned this earlier. This is how you can do a logo onto a face. Um, but the default selections here are all correct. This, the, the thing we're splitting is the sketch on this face here, and you just simply click check. And this is what a split line does. It now gives you an edge on this face. You'll notice it gave it to us in the back, too, because when we selected the face, it's a complete round. So it's split it on the front and the back. Now we get into surfacing. The thing we want to do is we actually want to delete this face out because we want to recreate this you know, with a dome or a curved arc in the middle. So you go to delete face. It says, hey, what face do you want to delete? You select this. Uh, there's different options here. I believe it defaults to just delete. You can ignore these other two for now. But we're going to go ahead and delete this. And now this, cha this changes. With this single command, we have changed our solid clay body into we are now in surface world. Again, if I was using Inception as an example, you have the different levels or whatever analogy you want. Narnia, we're in the closet now. Like it's it's different. We're now surface world, at least at least with with this body here. And you'll notice actually if I if I roll back, you'll notice here it says solid bodies one. Now when I delete this face, a new folder appears and it says surface bodies one. And so now this is like a piece of paper that's wrapped with a hole in it with two pieces of paper on either side. The good news with Surface World is it's almost, it's very similar to feature, to, to Solid Body World. All the feet, there's a lot of similar features. So there's Extrude, there's Revolve, there's Sweep. You'll see these all here, Extrude, Revolve, Sweep, Loft. What we want here is Loft, okay? So before we get to that, the demo asks you to create a sketch on the center right plane, or sorry, <laughs> on the right plane. And it's just a simple arc within here. What's key, though, with this arc is that you select this point and this edge. I hold control to select them both at the same time and say pierce, not coincident. Pierce means that the edge passes through the point. If I select this and this and make it coincident, 
from a side view, it sees this edge as a straight line. So coincident here, I'll show you as an example. It just locks it to this line. That's all that coincident does. So be aware that Pierce is a useful tool sometimes where you want it to be exactly in one location. The level of arc doesn't matter. It's how much you want that grip to be. You can go ahead and exit that sketch. The next stage is to create a loft from this edge through here to here. And again, it's very similar to like how we created a loft before where you select the entire face. In this, in this case, though, we're selecting single lines, not closed profile shapes. So here we're going to click on lofted surface. Here it's asking you what profiles you want. I'm going to start with this edge. We're going to go to this arc. And then we're going to come over to this edge here. You'll notice this gray thing is jumping. I don't think you need to correct it because these guide curves should correct it. So we're going to just go with this for now. The guide curves that we wanted to follow is the top edge and the bottom edge. And now this is creating something very similar, hopefully it's evident, to this here as one of these. It looks like it blends out and blends in, right? Now to get that blend to work even better, um, we want to set our start and end constraints to tangency to face. So you're, we're saying, hey, this edge, I want it to come tangent off of this. And this other edge, we want it to come tangent off of this. And go ahead and click that checkbox. And now if I hide everything, we have a surface that blends seamlessly from this flat here into an arc and back into here. If you were to repeat this pattern several times down, you would get something similar to what that thing is. Of course, we're not done though, because we're still in surface world. So you'll see we still have two surfaces here. Often you want the end result to be a solid body. It will render better. You don't want there to be some like light gap here or some weird kind of like meshing thing in Keyshot. You select this, which always looks like a life jacket to me. It's knit surface. And here you select the two surfaces and you check create solid. And provided you don't have any holes or gaps, we're back now into clay body world. So whenever you go into surface world, you always often have to end with a knit to knit all the sheets of paper together. Um, now, if I turn this off, again, we should have a resulting shape that looks similar to what's going on uh, in this image. I didn't. I just thought of this now. Let's look at this. Image. Actually, let's see if we can do this. There we go. Um, I just thought of this now. One thing you could do to pattern this, probably the easiest way to pattern this, if you didn't want to do this manually all the time, is simply just, this is where beyond the demo at this point. If you understand that like loft, knit, that's all you have to do, again, that should, it introduces surfacing in a very kind of friendly way. Um, and for what it's worth, like, I have worked on products where handle grip has been built this way by myself, by other people. This is, this is a common way to do a grip because it's a really beautiful blend from, from one to another. You could fill at this edge if you wanted. Um, but here, let's say if you all both. You could now, in theory, pattern this as like a linear pattern. Let's see if we can select the body. We want this body to be patterned. Uh, we want it to be this direction. I forget, I believe it's a half inch tall is what I made it. And now if we were to combine these, whoops, was that a subtraction? It was, I want to add. I don't know, you could always select how much of a gap you want, but now we have something that looks very similar to this on the right. Okay, so the next demo is uh, looking at Nina's selection and building the fan on the inside. What I was just saying, apologies for repeating it, is sometimes that there are these extra details that you may not consider with your objects, like we talked about earlier with Hannah's um, blended chamfer. But I thought the fan was a good example on like a demo on how to build these blades, use, once again, using surfacing. So if this demo used knit, the blade uses something slightly different. So again, this file is also available for download. It starts you off at this point. You'll notice, uh, you'll notice that um, there's a new feature here. So when you open this file, you'll see this. It's ex a surface extrude. It's right here. It's very simple. It's just a straight line pulled from the from the front master. 
and it's literally, it's just like every other extrude. It just tells you how far it goes. The difference is that it's just a thin, it's a plane essentially, it's a sheet of paper. Um, the reason why it starts this way is to give us an edge out here for us to loft to. So we're, again, we're gonna use another surface loft here. It also pulls this sketch from the master. Um, it's at an angle. So what this demo asks you to do is to go ahead and click on surface lofts. And then in the profiles here, if you uh, turn this on, you can, oops, you know what? I believe it starts with, you might wanna hide this master so you don't accidentally select it. Um, or you can go ahead and just select from the tree here. But it has you select this edge or this sketch and this line. And again, because we're in surface worlds, it allows you to, you know, it's a thin sheet of paper that we're lofting. Sometimes it might come in like this. Obviously that's a bit goofy, or I don't know, maybe that's what you want. There's more twist to that blade. But this was, this was my intent of the demo, was to have it go this way. So once you have that, go ahead and hit check. You can hide this surface body. And now you can see we already have part of a fan blade here. Um, I'll follow what the demo lays out. So before we had knit, another way to go from sheet of paper world to solid clay paper world is with thicken. This is literally taking your sheet of paper and saying give it thickness as, as advertised. So you click on that, it's saying, hey, what surface you wanna thicken? You can go ahead and select the blade. You have a couple options here. You can go about the middle, right, where it goes both up and down. You can go on one side. Now the more complex this gets, if there's like weird twists and stuff, this feature isn't as robust, uh, but this is pretty straightforward. Um, sometimes if it doesn't wanna work, you can try messing with these, you can try messing with the thickness. Um, sometimes it will go one way, but not the other. Um, like if it, if it expands into itself and creates like a non-possible body, that's where it would work one way, but not the other. I'll see if I can make an example of that in a minute here. Um, but for the demo, don't click merge results. That's because we want to have a resulting body. So you'll notice now with the thicken, we went from having two surfaces here, thicken, it converts it to clay. So again, this is another option to go from surface to solid body is thicken. Those are, those are really your only two options, knit or thick. That's the only two things you have. Um, now that we have this body, um, it asks you to make the blade by just adding a fillet. It's the simplest thing I could think to do. The thing I didn't account for as I was planning this is that you are quickly limited by the size of this fillet. And I think it's because of the twist in this face here. You can see this face is twisting. Um, the biggest I could get is a half inch, I think. Or no, not even, 0.4. Which I'll be honest, I'm a little bit shocked by. I thought SolidWorks would be able to get much bigger fillet on there. Um, but again, for the demo, this is fine. Um, and then simply you just pattern this around to get three of them, which I think you all know how to do. Now, had I planned this a bit better, like other things we could do to make this look more blade-like. Firstly, let me try a face fillet. Sometimes face fillets are a little bit more robust in getting bigger, so you select one face. We're off the demo now. Essentially, that was the demo. It's just locked and thick. Okay, no, the face fillet's not working. So let's try this different thing. Again, I apologize for beyond the demo here. From a top view, before we thicken this, we could, in theory, make a sketch here not in theory, in practice. Make a sketch here, make it tangent to these edges. Okay, it only, I think because I have this on a midpoint. Tangent. And now we can go back to surfaces and trim surface. This is kind of, it's kind of like an extrude cut. I apologize again, this is off the demo. But, um, here, because we had the sketch, it uses that as a trim tool. And simply here it says, hey, which section do you want to remove? And we can highlight this and delete that out. And now we have this smooth blade. And now we can thicken this. And now that looks more propeller-like. Um, to complete this, again, if I planned this a bit better, I would have put that in the demo. Circular pattern. Here you definitely want to pattern a body, right? Because that's a lot of commands to make this, or two or three commands to make this and then simply select um, in the direction of your center line here. Whoops. Set this to three and check. And now there you have it, we have a fan blade. So the other demo is um, completing this fan. 
And I already talked about this, but I guess it's in the other. Yeah, it was just a way to show you all how to approach this. Um, again, as a complex object. I guess one of my justifications as I was picking this was because she picked something complex. It serves as a good teaching tool uh, to show how to do this. Um, but anyway, again, starting with the fan. So the way that I approach this is, you know, start with a revolve cut. And that quickly removes the bodies and get, gets us close to the fan. Uh, front view, you know, this is not that important anymore. We can take this and convert entities. Uh, this is what I want to show you. So we have a single line here. If we go to revolve, it's going to ask you, oh, it didn't. But it might ask you, like, hey, it's an open contour. Do you want to close it? You would say no. But here you'll notice the thin feature is checked. This is something you can do with just a single line. That's actually what I wanted to mention here, is if you edit, oh, you can't download this anymore. But if you edit this feature, you'll see that it's made with, with a single line. And you have, if you check thin feature, you'll see that it gives it a thickness here. And again, you can select whether it's the mid plane or it's to one side, and the thickness of it. So I want you all to be aware that this is possible, that you can extrude a single line. And again, it's simply just extruding that line and then repeating it. Um, and then cutting it to get close to our shape. So we're going to do that again here. I copied these lines from the initial master. Uh, the other line I meant to copy, which I forgot, is the center line too. Set this to for construction. And now when you go to features here and go to revolve, this is what it asks you. It says, hey, it's open. You want to close it? I'm going to say no. Then it gives me the thin feature. And again, you can play with the thin feature. You can say which way you want it to go, whether you want it to go to the inside or to the outside. It recommends that you make this at a 0.2 thickness. And here now it's, and here now it's smooth on this outside. Um, it also The demo also asked initially that you take this and just drag this up just till it matches the proportion of the fan. Um, and then it talks through creating these ridges here. So from a top view, simply just taking a line that bisects part of this. I was When I did this, I was kind of looking at like this line and this line, creating this edge up here. And this could be done, um, I was gonna have you complete it into a shape, but you could simply have this extrude cut. And again, if you say through all both, that's, that's a way to, to cut with a, a thin line. And then simply patterning this. Um, this would be a feature pattern. And again, here you select the center line. Um, I believe that's the number of fins here. That's how you get this resulting edge. <laughs> right, yeah, so like, again, the approach and really, the result now, the, the remaining thing to do would be to cut the center. I did notice on the fan here, if we go up a, a touch, it looks like it dips down. So really, this revolve cut should have, yeah, should have a dip in the middle. And that's how you can quickly get these fins to do what you want. Um, the result the result would be to also like cut out the middle, you know, like cap it on the front and the back, and then drop the fan on the inside. Um, 